Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Thank God It's Flow. In this episode, we will build our first Microsoft Flow. Now, we know that the name has changed. It's now Power Automate, but at the end of the day, we all are building flows. So I'm not changing the name of the series. It remains Thank God It's Flow. What we'll talk about in this episode um, is a business scenario. Uh, we will also look at um, different types of flows which are available for you to create. Uh, the business scenario would be around um, how to get a value from a text field and then populate a lookup field in CDS or D365. Coming up right after the intro. So before we begin, I wanted to uh, let you all know that we have launched a TGIF uh, shirt shop. So uh, there are t-shirts available of all sizes. Um, this is a fundraising event for Rural Aid Australia. Rural Aid helps Australian farmers uh, with different aid, uh, like providing them water, uh, taking care of their cattle, um, providing them hay, um, financial assistance and things like that. So it's really important because of the drought uh, in many regions of Australia and the farmers are suffering. So that's for that. Please check out my website and if you can, buy a shirt. Uh, it's with the logo TGIF. I'm sure you'll like it. Okay, let's start our episode today. So what you can see on my screen is office.com so basically portal.office.com and then you log in now if you've got the right licenses you will be able to see flow as an option right i've got dynamics 365 as well as flow so as and when i click on it i land to this page All right basically i land onto the home page but what i've done is then clicked on my flows now in the last episode we have spoken about um the templates and just the basic around getting started with flows. So we'll go to my flows now. Now you can see there are four different tabs available here, right? Um, my flows is all the flows you have created uh, and they belong to you as an owner of the flow, right? Now, if I select one of them, you will see a share button appears here, right? If you share it with somebody else, uh, it becomes a team flows. So basically it will appear under here as well. They will also be able to run it, um, edit it. So when you share, you add them as owners or co-owners of the flow, and then it becomes team flows. Then you have business process flows. Um, if you don't know, this is coming from D365, Dynamics 365. That's where it's used the most. It's like a business process which you convert into a very uh, UI friendly um, flow. So I'll show it to you. So it looks like this. So if you can see the qualified, develop, propose and close, these are the stages of an opportunity. So you qualify a lead that becomes an opportunity, then you develop it, kind of nurture um, the sales opportunity and then you propose, which means you're sending out quotations for this opportunity. If I click on it, there are necessary steps which you must follow to complete the business process. So that's that. And if you will click on a business process flow from here, it takes you to the editing part of the process flow and that's the front end. So this was the front end. While if I click on that, it takes me to this one. So that's the editing bit, right? So that this is where you create business process flows. And you'll notice a change uh, in the URL. So you see that's the URL of it now. And if I click here, it takes you to DIYD365. So that's because these process flows are part of Dynamics 365. And hence you see something like this as URL. 
So that's your business process flow, UI flows. Now it's in preview right now. This is one of the latest feature released with uh, the name change uh, during Microsoft Ignite last week. Um, it is basically, it has got robotic process automation. So uh, you can read the text here. We will definitely do an episode on UI flows specifically, uh, but not today. So you can read the text here. It's, it's something really cool and really helpful for people. Okay, so moving on to my flow. So, okay, so what we're going to do is I'll give you some context around it. So if I go to an account form, so this is from CDS. I'll show it to you from Dynamics 365. So um, let me click here and you see the address, right? And there is this zip postal code. That's the postcode. So based on this postcode, we want, so that's our business scenario to build a flow today. Based on this postcode, we want to assign this customer to a territory wherein territories are managed by different territory managers. And I'm talking about salespeople. So based on the postcode, it's auto assigned to a sales manager. Um, we're looking at assigning it to a territory because sales managers or territory managers will have access to their territory record and they'll be able to check out the customers in their territory as and when these are created. Now, to give you a background before Power Automate was there, and if we wanted to do something like this, we will have to build a plugin. Now, plugin takes a lot of time as well. We all know that. Um, but after Power Automate or Microsoft Flow, this is a five minutes job. Now, I will take some time uh, to demonstrate it because I'm trying to explain at the same time as well. But once you know the steps, it's really quick to build. Now, how are we going to do it? Let me show you something. So in Dynamics 365 or CDS, both the places, you have got these, um, if I go to app settings, you can see sales territories. Now I have to, I've created two um, sales territories myself. One is SEQ Southeast Queensland and the other one is Far North Queensland. So if I click on this, you can see who's the manager, it's me. I can see customers in this territory. As of now, there are none. And if I go to related, there's this postal codes. So all these post codes belong to this territory. So, uh, and this postal codes as well is um, out of the box uh, entity or record time. So I have not customized anything. I've just created some post codes and related them to this territory. Now. We can see territory and postal codes are two different uh, data tables in the system, but when we go to an account, so let me go back to this one. When we go back to an account form or a customer form, what we see is that the postcode is a text field. So how do we get to auto-populate things? That's what we are going to look at. We are now going to create a flow. Uh, but before I do that, I just want to make sure that you understand um, how it can work in CDS as well. So where you see data, and then if you click on any of these, so if I click on entities, it takes me to make.powerapps.com. So it doesn't open it from here, but if you click on it, it takes you here. Now here I can see, if I click on entities, I can see a can. If I click on a can, I've got the access to data. So I can add a new record from here, or I can check out the record from here, right? So. Let me click on edit record. It will take me to the new page, which is this. So it's the same. Okay. Now, what we are going to do is create a new flow. Now you'll see multiple options here. Create from template is um, where you select a template, which is defined by Microsoft community or Microsoft themselves. You can pick that up and do it. And similarly, there's one for visual template. This is just a Visio template, dot .vsd file. Um, I will select automated from blank, but there's, there are more. Instead, then you can schedule uh, or schedule a flow as well. And then you've got business process flows, which we have just seen. And that would not be covered in this episode. I'm going to pick automated 
from black. So I'll give it a name, assign territory, and I'll look for a trigger. So my trigger should be record is created, right? So this one. So I'm picking up CDs. Obviously, you'll have to check your licensing or Power Apps plan, whether you have access to CDS or not. If not, you can select any other source here, um, which can be your SharePoint, which can be your Dynamics 365, depending on what type of flow you want to create. I'm selecting this one. And then I hit Create. Now, it will ask me about the environment. So I've got two here. Um, I'll select this one which entity we are talking about customers and accounts. So we will select accounts. Then we have scope. I'm going to select right now organization. We will definitely cover scope in one of the episodes in future, for sure. It's, and, and I'll also try to show you where it is coming from, the scope thing, right. So also before moving on to the next step, I want to clarify that this cannot be done via native workflows of Dynamics 365. There were two ways to do it. Either you create a plugin or you work on Microsoft Flow. Now, I don't know how to program. I'm not, uh, I just don't know it. Um, uh, so this is the easiest way I can achieve it. So I'm doing it here uh, and I hope it helps you. So uh, since this is our first flow, we'll also talk about some other cool stuff which you can do to identify or when you're reviewing your flow. So you can basically rename this text here. So what we can do here is let me just click on rename and I'll say when a customer is created. So if you tend to do or rename it like this, uh, whenever you're reviewing it, it will be a bit helpful because in the same flow, you can have similar steps. So basically what I mean by that, you can add when a record is created twice and then you'll be confused. What are you creating where? Because uh, when you try to open it, this is collapsed by default, not expanded like this. Anyway, so first of all, we are saying whenever a customer is created, that and then new step we will see whenever a customer is created and so i've not entered a condition there that the postcode contains data but i'm assuming that the postcode is mandatory so or you can just skip it as well then once we have entered address one zip postal code we will look at the list of records and what list of records we are looking at is postal codes the out of the box entity in D365 or your CVS instance. So I'll say list of records, environment, you will have to select the same environment here. And the entity we're talking about is post tool codes. So I select that. Now, what do we want to list? We don't want all the postcodes. We only want the postcodes where address one zip slash post tool code of my customer matches the post postal code record in the table, okay? So this was record type one, which is a can. When we are looking at list of records, this is record type two, postal codes. Now there is a filter query, which we need to apply. Now, for this specific reason, you'll have to look at the backend, what's the name field of postal codes? The, where the identifier field, right? So usually it's name, but for this entity called postal codes, it's msdyn underscore name. So we are saying if the name of this postal code record matches, so eq equals, eq is equals. So that's how you learn this shortcut, eq. Now I have no idea about ODOTA queries, but we will come up with an episode where we will talk about all these top queries which might help you and you don't really have to understand this language or query or whatever it's called right now once you do that you'll have to apply this and now you can do a text or either a dynamic field now what it's showing to you on the right is the fields of this record, which is created, right? So we are saying the name of the postal code is equal to address one zip code, right? Which is right here. 
So if, if the name here matches the address one zip postal code of the account, list all such uh, postal codes, right? So I'll do this and then I'll close it, right? Once that happens, we will add a new step. Let me first rename it. List postal codes matching um, postcode of account created in previous step. Okay. Once we have done that, we will again click on new step. Now, what do we want to do? We want to pick this postcode, check out its territory and assign it to our customer, right? So we will say update because this is an update action. So we say update, update a record, which record and which environment? So this environment, name is account. And what's the identifier of the record? So the identifier would be this record's ID. So instead of scrolling down so much, you can just say account ID or just account. And it says when a customer is created, unique identifier. So you click on that, it goes there. Now, what do we want to update? Till here, it's just identification and what you want to do. Now the final action is we want to update territory. So there are different fields that so there can be a service territory and they can be just this territory. So we want to do sales territory. Service territory, I guess, is coming from field service. I'm not using that, although I can, but I just want to make it simple. So I'll just go here and I'll say, um, why is it like this? Okay, so I've clicked here. Now, if I go to type territory, I will see list post through codes matching, right? So I'll pick the service territory there. So in post through codes, you've got a look of field. I'll show it to you later. So I'll pick that up and populate that here. And it auto um, provides a container to apply to each. Um, that's it. And that's your our first flow, which will now do the action. Now we will hit save. And now there's a very good way to test it. If you're doing it for the first time, it's kind of interesting. So I'll hit test and then I'll say, I'll perform the trigger action. Now what's the trigger action is right here when a customer is created, which actually is a count. So I'll hit this and I'll say save and test. Before I say save and test, I'll take you to the account form. No, actually postal codes form. So if I go to this tab and so this Queensland and related postal codes, I click on this postal code and you will see there's a service territory here, correct? So that's what should be populated if I enter this zip postal code in my account form. Now, We'll go back and back and go to all accounts and we will click new. Now, before we try creating it, we will go back to our flow and say, save and test, right? Because it says I will perform the trigger action. So which is creating an account. So we will say TGIF account we will leave the territory blank. You can also make it read only so nobody changes it. It's always um, based on this. So if I enter, um, let's say 4006 here, and I'll say QLD, um, AAU. Okay, I'm skipping everything else. And then I'll hit save. So save. So it's save now, we go back here. Here we'll see our test results, whether our flow is right or wrong, or it's facing some issues, whatever. Let's check it out. Okay, it clearly says your flow ran successfully. If it didn't, uh, it will show you a red 
um, message in the form of an error. Now it said a record was created. Um, you can check the XML thing here. I don't know what it's called. It's the body or output. Um, the account name was DGIF and then the flow went and checked the table. Um, we entered 4006, so it went and found um, 4006 in that table and then it updated, right? It updated one record, so it shows you one record. Now, if I go back to my account, which I created, it it is blank as of now. And the reason is that we haven't hit refresh. So I'll just do that. Okay, let me just open it from here. Um, accounts. T. G. I. F. Account. Oh. So it didn't work. So there must have been something wrong, or we are updating a wrong field. Let me quickly check. I'll hit edit. And let's see what we are updating. Okay, so the territory is blank here for some reason. That's why it didn't update. So, ooh, that wasn't expected. So let me just do it again and save it. And we'll test it again. I'll use this one because we just ran our ta test. So do this and save and test. Let's see what happens this time and should be successful. Now it's successful. I'll go back to my account, hit refresh, and there is the territory. So it's populated. So it obviously happened because we completely missed. I don't know how. I completely remember I clicked on it, um, but maybe I didn't save it, um, but I did it again. So, um, okay, so the territory is populated. Now we can cross check the zip postal code is this. I'll click on the territory, check out um, the postal codes in that. So you can clearly see 4006 as part of Southeast Queensland. I go back to the territory and you can see customers in this territory is this. So it picks up that. So a territory manager who is um, this person right now can check it out. Well, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, do visit my website, check out TGIF Shirt Shop for Rural A. Uh, thanks once again. Have a great day.